from one of the best cars uh, on the road, we go to the one of the best cars, uh, the one of the SUVs uh, on the road, and we're talking now to editor in chief at Motor Trend, Edward Lowe. How are you, Edward? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for for your time uh, again. Uh, so uh, last week, uh, Motor Trend uh, announced its uh, pick for the SUV of the year, which is a major, major award. The manufacturers really, really uh, appreciate that, and uh, the consumers too, right? So can you tell us a little bit about about the the reasoning behind you picking for the Forester 2014? Yeah, we're really proud uh, the, uh, to select the 2014 uh, Sport Utility of the Year as the Subaru Forester. Um, as far as why we did it, the uh, the rationale is um, it's not a comparison test. That's what a lot of people need to understand, uh, a lot of confusion about it. Um, what we do is we take all of the all-new or significantly updated uh, Sport Utility vehicles for the model year 2014. So it's not everything on the market. Yeah. It is uh, everything that is uh, new and improved. So this year there were 13 that were available from the manufacturers. And because it ranged from, like, the you know Kia Sorento or the Toyota RAV4 all the way to a Range Rover Sport, we can't compare them uh, to each other head-to-head. -head. We compare them against our awards six criteria, which include safety, value, efficiency, Advancement in design, engineering excellence, and then one we call performance of intended function, which is basically how well the vehicle does its job. Yeah. And against all of these criteria, after we test all the cars, if we drive all the cars, we argue about these criteria, and we chose the Forester. And how how uh, big was the argument with all the editors and experts at Motor Trend? You know, it was um, it was pretty spirited. You know, we started with uh, you know we started with 13. We, we you know kind of cut it in uh, in half, and that was pretty easy. <clears throat> and then going through you know like our finalists was was not terribly difficult either until we got around to like the last three. And I would say I would say really like you know the new Durango uh, had a pretty strong it made a pretty strong case. Uh, it's got eight speed transmission. Uh, it's it's like a more of the old school SUV in that it you know it can tow and it's got you know pretty good off road and uh, you know it's a it's a fantastic three row SUV so that was that was probably in third place and the the really tough battle came down between the Grand Cherokee and the Forester and uh, you know the Jeep Grand Cherokee is an amazing vehicle it comes with diesel V8 <clears throat> uh, a pretty good inline a pretty good uh, V6 and also the SRT version. And, of course, they're, they're super capable off-road, and they look great, and they're very handsome inside. But, man, that Forester is amazing. Yeah, it's you know, amazing. It quite, and and yeah. it's also very affordable. I mean, it starts like very a very low price, and then it goes up a little bit, but then you still get a lot of car for, for, the, for the price, right? Exactly, yeah. The value is very high. I mean, you can get that vehicle. And, again, value is relative. Like, we're, we appreciate that. You know, we picked the Mercedes-Benz GL last year, and we got a lot of criticism for that car being, you know, you can get it in, eat into the 100,000s if you get the, yeah. you know, the GL63. But relative to its class, you know, when you start talking about, like, a GL, you know, the, the blue tech, the diesel, it's like 65,000. That's that's pretty good for a, a luxury three-year SUV. Same thing for the Forester. I mean, you get this vehicle starting at $23,000 as the base model and nicely equipped, you know, in the $27,000, $28,000 range, and it's fully loaded at 33. Um and it's it's fast yeah. and it's fun and it gets really good fuel economy and it's the craziest thing and this is where this is where I think it really set itself apart is that it looks people give it a lot of I think there's a lot of criticism about how it looks but if you really appreciate car and vehicle engineering and product packaging you look at that thing and you scr start scratching your head you go yeah. how do they do this <laughs> exactly. the thing gets the thing gets 8.7 inches of ground clearance that is the same as like a rear uh, two wheel drive FJ Cruiser. The same as the Ford Explorer. I mean, vehicles that you would think are like more capable off of. Yeah. Yet, it's got a, it's very spacious interior. Um, very, very good visibility. That's the, the biggest thing. They're not doing the same thing everybody else is with the high belt lines. They've dropped the belt lines. So you have a great view of the road. You have a great view all around you. Excellent. And then, um, yeah, so, my, my, uh, Edward, I'm sorry, uh, we're running out of time here in this segment, so oh, I just sorry. wanted to let our audience know motortrend.com for more information on how you did all the, the testing for this car, right? 
Yep, absolutely. Motortrend.com, you can check us out on YouTube, too. There's, there's a whole bunch of videos about it. Excellent. And uh, Motortrend gives all their awards for other categories, right? So what's coming up? Like in Yeah, we got uh, Car of the Year We got car of the year coming up, and then we will do Truck of the Year soon after. So it's award season for us. Excellent. Well, Edward uh, Lowe, Editor-in-Chief at Motortrend, thank you very much for your time again. I hope to talk to you soon. Great. Thank you, Javier. Thank you very much. Ya regresamos aquí en Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota.